Father, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Make the love. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise your Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. We give you glory, give out, and praise. We thank you, Father God, this word to be sown on good ground, and it will bear fruit in the hearts of the people. And I give you glory, give out, and praise. Right now, Heavenly Father, I ask that you anoint the ears of the hear, to hear what the Spirit of God will have to say. I do, Father, ask you today that each one here will hear this word accurately, and they will hear it precisely, and they will not just be hearers of what they hear today, but they will go out and be doers of it. For lives, Heavenly Father, the doers will get the results, and we give you all the glory. All the honor, all the praise, and all the admiration for that in Jesus' name. Right now, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I have that fresh anointing to minister your word. I thank you, Father God, the anointing is on your word. I thank you, Father God, your word is what is powerful. Your word is what produces results in people's lives. And I give you glory and honor and praise. And I do, Father, ask you now, I will speak this word accurately. And I will speak it precisely. And I will speak it boldly and with authority. For I the greatest he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I will ask, Heavenly Father, the joy of the Lord is my strength and is the strength of my life. I pray it now, Father God, in this message, all of you and none of me right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that revelation knowledge shall flow for you today, uninterrupted, unhindered by the satanic and demonic force. I thank you, Father, your word shall not return to you void, but it shall accomplish the said it will do. Also, Father God, thank you, the Lord thy God, that cannot lie, and you confirm your word with signs follow. And therefore, I declare the signs shall follow. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like you to turn your Bibles today to 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, and we're going to be talking about demons' strategies against you. And I'm finding out that, and even myself sometimes, I was ignorant of certain things and what demons were really doing. Now, I want you to get out of your mind that movie, The Exodus. Okay? That's Hollywood. Amen? And demons do exist. And Satan's biggest deception he don't want you to know they do exist. He don't want you to know they're, they're working in your lives. And they're working in a lot of Christians' lives and they don't even know it. Don't even realize. And, and, and you know what? And they work religion. Satan and his demon love religion. Matter of fact, Jesus made a statement. I don't know what I get in that today. He made a statement to, he called, you know, people with long prayers. He called them hypocrites. See, just because somebody pray in the name of Jesus doesn't mean they're praying. Uh-oh. That's, that's another message. But understand this. So there, there's three or four areas that Satan, I want to show you today how he comes. And a lot of times we don't even recognize what we wind up doing. We wind up responding to the suggestion that Satan give us based on the situation that's going on in our lives. That's what we do. And like, like, for instance, somebody cuts you off, cut in front of you in the car, and the first thing you want to go turn around and say, look at that nut. But the first thing should come out of your father, well, I up to him before your throne right now. I pray for him, Father, that, that nobody get in an accident as a result of this. But see, you have to have a devoted prayer life to do that. Other than that, if your life spending more time putting worldly information in, inside of you, see, understand this. Social media, there is no end to it. And what has happened is that, and I'm not saying anything wrong with it, but it can be wrong if you use it the wrong way. Y'all heard what I said to you? If this if it's influence your life more than God's word, guess who's going to win? Guess who's going to have the power of suggestions in your life? And guess what you're going to function by? Amen? Now, I want to give you some criteria to say something about demons. Demons are seducing, demons are seducing spirits to try to persuade people to disobedient and disloyal to God. That's the objective. Amen? Or to lead astray, it means in the Greek. One of the words they call plano means imposter. 
to mislead. Amen? Demons are spiritual agents with no power. Excuse me. <coughs> they were stripped of their power. Jesus stripped them. In the, in the old covenant, they had power. Now they scripted it of their power. Only thing they have now is to suggest things, and they will do that through the media, through social media, through any avenue to get into your mind. And there is a way that seems right in a man's eye. Demons will work the seem right syndrome. That's mean you have to have a devoted prayer life. Spend time in the Word so you'll want to have a devoted prayer life. And then now you'll have more of God in you than the world in you. Amen. Satan has a sign, I'm sorry, His demons are evil spirits to destroy you and counterfeit everything as God is doing that's been doing and doing now. Amen? Now, I'm going to get into these other words later. Satan comes with distractions. Like I told you, the biggest deception is to make you think he doesn't exist. People say, I don't believe in the devil. And guess what? He will have turmoil in your life. I don't believe the devil's doing that to me now. He got you. He got you. See, understand this. When we're in ministry, I, you gotta understand something. As a pastor, the Bible talks about you, you want pastor to do his job without being grieved. If you grieve the pastor, you're grieving God. And, we, and we've been caught up in rules and regulations now. Yeah. My spiritual father said something the other day. Very unique. You spend, you, you spend all that time, you're trying to, trying to do everything in the air and pray and, and pray. And, and he said, I, I, I can't tolerate this no more. And God said, neither can I. <laughs> you understand something? Grace came to make us free. Free from the law. Amen. Demons use the law. Demons know the law. Demons want you to operate by the law. Demons have power in the law. The Bible says the law is the death, it's the it's the it's the death of ministration. It brings death. So demons want you to think, you don't need God. I can do this by myself. And they got you. But you're really not doing it by yourself. They influence you to do it through the power of suggestion. Amen. Y'all okay? Now, I said, say it again. Satan has assigned his demons or evil spirits to destroy you and counterfeit everything that God has done. He is limited to the forces of this physical world, and so are his demons. Fear is of Satan, and faith is of God. And demons, they need a body to express themselves. And I'm going to get into that, and I'm just going to say something about it a minute. You've got to understand this. When Adam and Eve was in the garden, a snake spoke to Eve. A talking snake. Do snakes talk now? No. But Satan used the snake because he, he, couldn't, he was not in man then. Y'all heard what I'm saying to you. Now y'all heard of Mr. Ed, the talking horse, right? That's television. <laughs> Amen. But think about him. He used the snake. And he wanted Adam's authority and his dominion. And Adam gave it to him. 
And he could have stopped the whole thing, even though Eve had, Eve had ate, because the seed nature was in man. Just like what God gave him that woman Eve, he could have gave him a, another woman called Mary Lou. <laughs> Amen? Because the seed nature was in man. Because guess what? She did not come, Eve did not come from God. Eve came out of Adam. Came out of man. Amen. Y'all okay now? Now, First Timothy chapter 4, New Living Translation. Now the Holy Spirit, now listen very carefully. He, he said the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times, some will turn away from the true faith. Now, what the Apostle Paul was teaching was true faith. What we got going on is not, not true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teaching that come from demons. Oh, demons teach? Yes, they're in the pulpit. They're in the pulpit religion. They love religion. They don't care if you stomp, you jump, holler. They don't care. What they care about is keeping you away from getting revelation of God's word and understanding God's grace. I said something to the ministry hope team early. You got to realize something. The reason it's hard for people to receive the grace message because they've been, they've been indoctrinated highly with something that's in the past, the law. Grace is in the future what God is doing. Jesus, Jesus even tried to say that to the woman in the well. She said, we worship this father at this well. And he said, woman, the hour's coming where the true worshipers, see, grace are true worshipers. You're not under grace. You're not a true worshiper. How can you turn around and say, I, you want, I, I, I don't believe in that grace stuff. And the Bible said, by grace are you saved. It is a gift from God. How do you turn around and you say you don't believe? Are you really saved? Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last time some will turn away from the true faith, they will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. Demons want to teach you to do it their way. They got strategies against you. They, they, they plan a board meetings and strategy, how to, how to influence your life. So everything that's common to man, every situation, is going, they, they, they're not coming up with nothing fancy. They're going to use the situations in your life to get to you, to attack you. So a lot of times, instead of, instead of going, you got a situation going in your life, instead of you go, well, I got to go do this, I can't do this, I got to go do this. Instead, you say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Instead of just reacting. And situations are real. Now watch this. Y'all okay? Verse 2. These people are hypocrites. Hypocrites. Jesus called Pharisees hypocrites and liars. And their conscience are dead. Their conscience is dead from the things of God. Now watch, go to verse 3. They will say it's wrong to be married and wrong to eat certain foods. In other words, you should eat right food, but what they're saying is, they got you all caught up in the food thing instead of the God thing. Now watch this. But God created those foods to be eaten with thanks by faithful people who know the truth. We're saying, we can eat it. No, no, that's not, that's, not, that's not what he's saying. But see, food shouldn't be your, be, be your God. See, understand. There's wisdom you can get from God how to eat. You got to understand something. The temple of the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. You've been bought with a price. This ain't your body. You've been bought with a price. By the blood of Jesus. Y'all okay now? Now, you, you want to listen? You want to know a little more a lot of details about demons? I got a series called Demon on Assignment. But now watch this. Go to, go to John 10.10. 10.
The thief coming now. The only reason he's coming. But for it to steal and to kill and destroy. Demons of death is to steal and kill and destroy. So how do demons steal, kill, and destroy? Steal the word. Keep you from knowing about the grace of Almighty God. That's where they're coming. You notice in the Old Testament, Jesus has never talked much about demons. Hmm. Think about it. Now watch this. Jesus, I've come. They may have life or the Zoe type of life. And they may have it more abundantly. The Amplified reads this. To it fulls, to it overflows in your life. So Satan objected. Demons come to steal, to kill, and destroy. So you don't have the abundant life, the overflowing life. That's why they come. And they come with every situation that's real in your life, and you might think it's important. Y'all okay now? First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And this is, this is what Satan used. How do you know something if you're not spending time in the Word how do you know whether something is a temptation or not? For it says, There have no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above you are able. Now, so everything that Satan brings, every situation, his strategy, is all done based on the common to man. It's no, it's no, it's no, should I say, Powerful spiritual method. He uses everything to common to man. He uses situation. Now, and demons are sitting there trying to figure out a strategy how to get in your situations of life to keep you from getting the abundant life that God provided for you. That's the assignment. So you just give up on God and quit. That's what it means. You, you, want, you want to be, when it said pray without ceasing, that's what you always want to be praying. Bring him for your situation. Lord, I thank you. You're taking care of that. Spend more time thanking him for what he's already provided by grace, by the blood of Jesus. Don't allow the enemy to put you in a situation where you're spending time, where you're spending time just, um, should I say, just talking about the problem. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Praise God. Now watch this. They have no temptation that's taken but such as common to man, but God is faithful who will suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. Not to be above you able. But will the temptation always make a way of escape that you may be able to bear? There's always an escape. Do you take the escape when demons put suggestions in your mind? Or do you yield to what's the natural man says about you, that makes sense. It can make sense, but it could be a demon suggestion to you. Y'all okay? Now, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. And we're going to do this in the New King James and the Living Translation. Let's see, hold on. I don't want to go there for a whole second. Yeah. Verse 10 to 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Notice he did not tell you to be strong in yourself. Now, if I got more of the world in me, how will I be strong? If I got more demon suggestions in me, how will I be strong? Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord, then in the power of his might, in the power of God's ability, in the power of God's grace that's been given to you. Verse 11. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles 
of the devil, wiles or trickeries, deceits, and Satan's strategy against you. But he said, put God's armor on. So if I'm going to recognize God's armor, that means I got to have the word going in me. I got to have the word going in me continuously. And I'm not saying there's what, anything wrong with, with doing other things of the world. What I'm saying to you, what is occupying your mind the most? I had a sister say something that she said she was realizing something. And I watch Hallmark too. And I might do it on Sunday. But she said, see, I find myself watching Hallmark, going back to the refrigerator and doing this. And she turned around, she made a statement. She says, I got Hallmark, but I'm not, I'm not making a mark with God. I can't erase. And we got to the, the, understand, in the beginning was the word. Now, if God started off the word in the beginning, and his word was important for him to start off with the word, what do you think we should start off with every day? Put on the whole arm of God that you may stand against the wild or trickies of the devil. Now watch verse 12. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Flesh and blood, people are not your enemy. The, the, the woman that's sitting next to your job, that's giving you a hard time, that person is not your enemy. That Christian that talk bad about you is not your enemy. That person that cuts you out says you was a crook. That's not your enemy. For he wrestles not against flesh and blood, but against principality. Notice the war. There's a war going on. Principality. See, we got to realize something. We're not civilians. The Bible said we are soldiers in God's army. In the army, you don't go in the military and do things your way. You do it their way. And if you don't do it their way, they will show you what their way is and lock you up. And some Christians are being locked up from God's power working in their lives. Because they got more demon, demonic influence in their life than God. They got more religion in their lives. For he wrestles not against flesh and blood, but against principality, against the power, against the rules of darkness of this world. Now notice he said, Satan and his demons are rulers of darkness in this world. So darkness does exist. So when you yield the demons' suggestion, you're yielding to the rulers of darkness of this world. So now, guess what? You're not going to see what you need to see because guess what? You allow the rules of darkness to come into your life. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. There's, the There's demons in high places over the atmosphere, too. Wait, let me see, can I get them? This here worked before, let me try it again. Now, let's go to the New Living Translation in verse 10 now. Give you a little, so some people can get the King James. Gonna give it to you in the living. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Wow. Now God giving you the power to deal with demons. Now it's up to you to use the power you've been given. But it's been given you. You got power. And Satan don't want you to think, he wants you to think you are just a human. I heard people say this sometimes. Well, I'm just a human. That's an insult to all my You're not just a human. You are a supernatural God's child with God's ability and God's power in his life. That's who you are. You need to start saying that about yourself. And I, I just did a series on who you are in Christ Jesus. I want people to, when they come, they, they know who they are in Christ Jesus because the devil is going to try to attack your identity. They found the word, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now watch verse 11 in the Philippine translation. Put on all God's armor. so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devils or demons. Mm. So demons have strategies again. Verse 12, watch this. 
For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers, authority of the unseen world. There's an unseen world. Against the mighty power in this dark world and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Now, you're in a war whether you want to be in a war or not. See, I can go in another country and there's a war going on and they give me a gun. I might say, I don't want to be in this war, but guess what? You in it. And you, don't, you, don't, and you got a weapon, you don't use it, they will kill you and shoot you down. You better be able to shoot back. Now, said all that, these demons on the side of you have God's power, you have God's ability to fight back. You got everything. Just like a person got a, a weapon to fight back in a war. You got weapons. You got a weapon. Now, Luke 10, verse 19 and 20, New Living Translation. Watch this. Look! I have given you the authority over all the powers of the enemy. What did he say? I have given you the power over all the enemy. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. But see, the old serpent, that's what he did, he used a snake. He said, you can walk on them. Hello? And nothing will injure you. Nothing will injure you. Watch verse 20 now. But don't rejoice because evil spirits are based. Don't rejoice because you got the power of evil spirits. Don't rejoice over that. But rejoice because your names are written in heaven. That's what you rejoice in. Because your name is written in heaven. So we got to become, more, that's what the Bible tells us, set your affections not on the things on this earth, but the things that are above, where Christ is. Y'all okay? Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We don't fight back like humans. They cuss us out, we don't turn around and cuss them back out. Hello? We are humans, but we don't wage war as humans do. Verse 4. We use God's mighty weapon. Wow. We use God's mighty weapon, not worldly weapon, to knock down the stronghold of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. See, how do I know something for? If I'm not in the Word, it could sound really good, but it could still be false. I want to share this story with you. And you might have heard it before. One morning we got ready to go hear the Word. Our basement was flooded. And bear in mind, I, I got kids to bring to church too. Basement flooded. I heard, stay home now. You got to take care of this basement. Now, don't they seem logical? Huh? Basement full of water, carpet in the basement, water all over the place. And I heard, it's not going to get any more wet. It's already wet. Go hear the word. And I, when I went and heard the word, I'm glad I did because some wor other words wanted to come out of my mouth trying to get that carpet out of there. See, see, see God knows. See, it might not make sense to you. But see, you got to learn how to go. When you're going through something, go how to get fueled up. Hello. See, when, you, when you're out of gas, your car's not going to run. 
And see, there's a lot of Christians look like Christians, but don't walk like Christians. The word Christian means anointed like him. And in Christian, I, 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 I see no anointing. Wow, verse 5. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. That's what you do. You see people going through situations, you start praying for them, praying in the spirit. You see somebody that come and you don't see them no more. Are you spending time praying for that person? Because you don't see them? They're having a struggle. They're not where you're at. They don't understand demons coming their way. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. Now watch this. We capture their rebellious thought and teach them to obey Christ, the anointed one and his anointing. That's what we do. That's what we're supposed to do. Amen. Now, let's go where Satan started his master plan to take over to become the God of this world system. Yep. Now, I want to say this to you. Satan will attack your identity. This is used deception. Hello? He comes with weapons of distraction. Any, he'll come and bring anything to get your eyes off the word. He'll come with anything for you to replace the word and his objective. You don't have time to do the word. You're tired, you work. The, rate, the, the way to eliminate your tired, getting tired at work, is spend time in the word. Now, I'm not saying anything wrong with resting. But see, to come an area, I used to be in an area where, you ask my wife, I had to sleep a lot. I wanted to sleep. I, I, I really did. I felt I was always tired. I'm not like that no more. Because guess I'm devoted to him. And the Bible tells me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And no matter what obstacle my job brings to me, it doesn't matter. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm not going to slow down because my job, my job, my job is too much now. Cut it out. We got to stop this stuff, talking this stuff. We, you, you're, you're, you're building a greater mountain in the situation where, you, where you're working. You don't know that. And then you talk devil talk all the time. First thing come on, come on, about devil talk, blah, 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 devil talk, devil talk, devil talk, situate devil talk. That's what happens. And not knowing it. And I'm not talking about people not sincere, but that's what demons want you to do. It makes sense to you. And then, and then they'll try to get you to justify why you think thinking that way. And you go over and say it's okay. And you ate the package. You ate up the whole package. And especially your pastor try to tell you something, you don't want to listen. People don't want to listen. I tell somebody, they, hey, you go ahead and do it your way. See, I, I, I'm not, I, I don't allow people to try to, you don't ever call me and tell me, you want me to count, you want to tell me how to do it? No, 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 no. What are you calling me for? Well, this minister said this, well, go to him then, see you later. Put it like this. Satan, he, it's hard for people to hear the message of grace because they're, they're under the law. You know, it took some time. You know, James, James, wrote, to the, James wrote to the tribe of, of, of Israel, the Jews, and James didn't say a lot about grace to a degree, but understand this. James had to try to reach them on a level where they were at. And sometimes people can't, they can't handle the whole thing at once. Just like there's things right now I can handle now, I couldn't handle before. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can't handle it. Take what you can handle and go on with that. 
and then God will show you the rest. Well, I, I think pastor going to, God didn't tell you to think. He gave you a pastor to perfect you. And think about maybe you don't see it yet. So that means you think pastor going the wrong way. May, maybe you just don't see it yet. Or you think you're smarter than God. My spiritual father mentioned something about himself. When you start teaching great people, left the church in groves. So they're there for the wrong reason. And I thank God for the internet. You at home, you're watching right now. Hey, that's good. And a lot of people are using that as an excuse now to stay home. Because I can watch you on the web. You do that all the time. You ought, to be, you, you ought to be in a brook where you can get nourished and fed. And Christians did this. A lot of them. I can't come to church. You know, COVID-19. But all, all, all during the epidemic, guess what? They went to the, the grocery store. They went to the movie. They went everywhere. And the only place they were concerned about getting COVID-19 was the church. Ain't that so? I think the church was a lot safer than the, the, the movie theater. But see, that was another suggestion of demons. To keep people away from what? The word. Y'all okay? Now watch this. Genesis 1, I'm going to try to do this. Watch this. The serpent was more shrewd of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Verse 2. Of course we may eat fruit from the tree in the garden. The woman replied, verse 3, it's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. And God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do it, you will die. God never said nothing about touching the tree. See, there's a lot of things God be responsible for, but he tell you not to do certain things. Watch verse 4. Now, here's the avenue. Satan always comes to question the word. To, right now, you'll be questioning what I said today. He'll come to get you to question the word. I don't believe it that way. I don't believe I got to do it that way. Why I got to do it that way? Well, do it your way. The way that seems right. He said, you won't die. The servant replied to the woman. Verse 5. For God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it. Now he's going to bring in what God knows. And you will be like God. They were already like God. You're already the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're not trying to become righteous. You're all right. You're not trying to become holy. God classified you as already holy. You're not trying to, you're not trying to, trying to get God to do something. God's already done it by grace. That's what Satan wants you to say. You got to get God to do this. You got to work to do this. No, Jesus already did the work. Only thing he wants you to do is to thank him and praise him and to correspond to what he already has done. Amen. Verse 6. Wow. Now, after all this, watch this. The woman was, was convinced. She was convinced. See, that's the thing that give you enough information, talk to you, so I can convince you. What, what, what God, what, can I convince you what God is saying is false, and I can convince you what I'm saying to you is true. And the woman was convinced, and she saw the tree was beautiful, and it was, fruit looked good and delicious. Okay. You know you shouldn't go eat that fast food. You know you haven't been put in your system. You know you've been eating it. But Satan showed you it was delicious. Now watch this. And the woman was convinced that she saw that the tree was beautiful and it was too, it looked delicious. And she wanted the wisdom 
want, want, want the wisdom it would give her. She thought eating that would give her wisdom. And she already had wisdom. Hello? See, that's what Satan does. God already provided something. He's going to get you to try to work to go get it. He wants you to think God's not doing nothing. And God has already done everything. It's already been complete. Now watch this. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was where? With her, who could have stopped the whole thing. But he didn't. And he ate too. Let's continue. Is that the last part of that? That's it, yeah. And he ate too. And as a result, that's where we're at today. And both of them listened to the devil. And Adam said, to, and listened to the devil. When are you going to stop listening to all the strategies of the devil, what the media tell you, what the news tell you, which 99% of them is lies on the news right now. And you're paying attention, attention to all of them. When was the last time you prayed for your president, your leaders in authority, your mayor, your elected officials? When was the last time you've done that? That's what we call to do, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Praise God. I praise God you are blessed today. Amen. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Well, now, we're going to continue to worship the Lord now with our worship of giving. Giving, whether you know it or not, is worship. Your, 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 your worship is not complete until you give. And you could have sat there listening to them. You could have said, well, hey, pastor, you know, I don't buy it. That's fine. Nobody, God's never going to make you follow him. Amen. I just showed you two people got themselves in trouble. That's when we're in the mess in this world today. That's when we have all kinds of demons and strategies to try to destroy your life. And I said in the beginning of the message, Satan come to kill, to steal, and destroy. Amen. So you're home right now. I give you the opportunity to worship God. He'll see us and say, well, that all that minister wants is my money. First of all, that's a lie of from pit out of hell. Satan is the one that telling you that right now. God set the system up so his gospel could go out, and that's his gospel of grace. Amen? So if you want to participate, you can go to www.faithlove.org, click on Give, or you can go to www.robertcorporalministry, or you can text Give to 973-355-7719, or you can mail the P.O. Box to 00491, that's Newark, New Jersey. only thing we ask you to do what God tells you to do. My wife can give me my orphan. Praise God. That's all right. I get it. Praise God. Anyway, I got my orphan, but praise God. We'll give you the opportunity now. Anybody that decided to see, see the Lord, raise your orphan envelope, raise your hand. We'll give you the orphan envelope. Praise God. Amen. Father, we thank you, the people who give us in Jesus' name. Amen. Come forward. Father, we thank you for the seed time and harvest principle. For realize this king for kingdom building, that your covenant may be established in the earth. Those that brought the orphan, well, still, even though I left my envelope, I don't ever want to come to service and don't put nothing in. Nothing, never, never going to do it. Come on. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Even, even, even though it's home, it's still going in. But I'm going to put something because I'm here. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the people give us. Now, you're at home right now. We'd like to give you the opportunity to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. You might have heard a lot of things. Whether you believe, I can't make you believe. Only the Spirit of God can persuade you right now. And so we'd like to make it very simple for you. You can like to repeat this after me. Say, Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died for me. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you Lord of my life. And Jesus, you are now my Lord and Savior. Whether you know it or not, the angels in heaven are rejoicing over you. You are king's kid. You are royalty. You are somebody. Now, we'd like to give you the We'd like to hear from you. Text the I am born again to 844-200-1275. And just say I'm born again. That's all you got to do. Or you can go to www.faithlove.org. Now, you just got born again. Also, you can click on Gift of God's 
love on our website, faithlove.org, and then click on Gifts of Salvation. It'll tell you who you become. I encourage you to get in the church that's teaching God's word on a consistent basis. That's so important, amen? Praise God. Now, praise God. You're sitting at home. You ought to be hooked up to the local church. I'm, I, this might not be the church. I don't know. But I'd like to give you the opportunity to become an e-member. I'd like to be your pastor. Amen? And, and we'll, we'll start you off doing that from home. You can go to w.faithlove.org, click on Join FLCC, or you can call 973-577-7084, and we'll tell you what to do to get started. We want you to know we love you so very much. Amen? We pray, Father, you can do it sitting above, above all the people who ask to think according to your power, Father. We give you glory and honor. Now that they will keep you from falling and present you faultless, go in peace. In Jesus' name, amen.